Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big Gaucho, the stock investor show. Completely not pocket up with money in your pocket. I'm Austin back again with Big Gaucho Tyler. We got a banger episode for you today. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, Big Gaucho? It's Big Gaucho Tyler. We back with another banger video. Let's go. Yes, sir. Let's go. We are ready to jump into it, but uh, we just want to first say uh, we're wishing Dave well in medical school, but unfortunately, he will not be joining us for the podcast. Uh, you know, we on a serious note, we are. You know, sad to see that happen. Uh, we'll miss you, Dave, but hopefully he can be a guest on future podcasts with us. All right. Oh, yeah, and, definitely. Uh, Dave, we love you. you you're going to make it. Yeah, he definitely will. One way or another. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, and then on that note, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll get right into the video for you. All right. So first up, coming in hot, this has been a topic on Big Gauchos a little bit, if you've been following the show in the past, but... A new update for the eviction moratorium for real estate. It has been extended until October 3rd of this year. So that means a couple different things. Um, but first, we'll just get into how it started and how this all came about. Supreme Court previously ruled that the ban was going to expire on July 31st, which, as we know, didn't happen. Um, just based on, you know, sequence of events. Technically, it did, though. It expired for like one day. Um, but it was recently extended and Biden acknowledged that the Supreme Court ruled that the extension was unlawful, but he still gave the CDC the power to extend the ban. And so the CDC actually determined that the ban was going to last until October 3rd. So this caused a divide on both sides of the political spectrum. First, the real estate groups in multiple states, uh, Alabama is the most vocal out of all of them. And the southern states but they're attempting to appeal and get this band overturned so they can collect some of the unpaid rent from the tenants um, either through the rental assistance fund or just to get new people in there and on the other hand tenants nationwide are protesting this order and asking for rent forgiveness claiming that they can't uh, have the same means as they used to have before the pandemic hit and that's why there's unpaid rent and they're asking for some leniency as well so uh, with this highly debated topic, uh, Big Gaucho Tyler, what are we thinking? I'm thinking that we all know that this market is going to be a pretty big crash. I feel like we are delaying the inevitable. We talked about this a little off screen, but, you know, it's been two years of pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. And uh, eventually this is going to have to come to the end. You know, eventually a lot of, you know, tenants are going to have to kick out their renters. And a lot of houses are going to start going on for sale. And I feel like this is just building up until it finally just implodes on itself and we see a really big shift in the market. So I'm excited to see that happen. You know, a lot of cheap houses hopefully do come because everything's super, super expensive. But other than that, you know, hope, hopefully things aren't as bad as we think it will be, but it doesn't look good right now. Yeah, it's, it's not looking good at all. And touching on what Tyler was saying, the price of houses is coordinated with inflation as well. Just because a lot of the goods and services have been going through the roof, a lot of it is due to the Federal Reserve buying a bunch of uh, treasury bonds to keep the housing market afloat and keep those interest rates as low as possible for the foreseeable future. So not that this is necessarily a bad thing, just because there is a time and a place for the quantitative easing and trying to help people out and, you know, keep goods and services um, low and houses affordable. But when done uh, in excess, kind of like the government's been doing this year, it could lead to some major inflation or some serious housing market consequences. I agree. This is some, definitely something to, you know, watch closely because, out of all the things the government has been doing to you know, help ease like the tension with uh, the pandemic, this has probably been like the biggest focal point for them to you know push back people trying to pay their rent. So you know keep yep. an eye on that you know and plan accordingly. This has been the biggest impact. And if you're following any of these trends, if you're making the median income or lower or just a little bit above in the United States, uh, you can no longer afford a house. So. Uh, that's that's one of the major downsides to this as well. Um, I know just in Arizona, the median house price in the Phoenix metro area just went to 400000 So uh, a lot of houses are out of reach for a lot of families as well. So 
it's it's definitely time you know for something to change with the way these cash buyers are just overtaking the market so you know I, I, maybe maybe we see a little bit of a shift there i think it would be healthy for everybody i agree i agree yep well i guess we'll have to see what happens i feel like uh they're just going to keep kicking the can down the road even further just like they do every couple months but <laughs> Uh, with that being said, maybe they could just start buying some houses in Bitcoin instead. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Next big story All we got right. up. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So a new U.S. Senate bill might exempt cryptocurrency businesses from paying taxes. Um, I know some of you are wondering how this could be true. Um, I'm wondering the same thing myself. It might be too good to be true. But... Under this new law <laughs> that's being proposed in the Senate, if a company is exclusively dealing in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, they don't have to report that income on their taxes. So the IRS specifically will not be able to require miners, stakers, and uh, Bitcoin or other uh, crypto companies that sell hardware like uh, um, physical wallets or digital wallets. Um to report the activities of their customers or users, uh, paper wallets or digital wallets. So Senate is going to vote on this measure early next week. So it begs the question, do you think businesses will start dealing more in Bitcoin if they're getting a tax break? Because there is a little bit of risk to it. Uh, yeah, if businesses just use Bitcoin, then I feel like if they don't have to report anything, then you're golden. Like it's you know, no extra taxes paid to the IRS. But the problem with that is you're also taking a risk when, let's say you make a $50,000 sale, right? And you get it all in Bitcoin. One day you're up 50,000. The next day you can see a huge crash and it'd be worth like 30,000. Like instantly you could lose $20,000. Yeah. If the government is forcing you to pay taxes, that'd be crazy on the tax books because you could, you know, take in, a, you know, gross revenue, 100k but by the time you're doing your taxes is only worth 30,000 you're like well do i pay 100,000 in taxes or 30,000 taxes because that's all it's worth or let's say you do $100,000 in sales and it's now worth 250,000 how do mm -hmm. i make how do i pay taxes in it you know so it could definitely be tricky for the bucks but i don't see why businesses shouldn't at least adopt it somewhere within their business yeah that's very true. That's a good point. It's it's probably not lucrative to do that either just because it's way too much risk. But if you're one of those companies that uh, sells hard drive space for um, a paper wallet for Bitcoin or something like that, I mean, it could be really good for you. It just really depends on your situation. But again, we are not uh, financial professionals. So uh, <laughs> anything said um, is our opinions. And that's oh, yeah, it. Definitely. I mean... Bitcoin, if I'm like a business owner, I'll definitely take Bitcoin as like a form of payment. Will I make it the sole payment of my company? Probably not. It's too much going on within that space for me to be, you know, comfortable putting all my money into it. But, oh, yeah. you know, if it's, you know, down a little bit, might as well throw a couple bucks its way, you know, for investing purposes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, cash is always king. So we'll see if this even gets passed and then we'll have to worry about the adoption later. But for now, all we got to worry about is the big winners, the big losers, and the sleepers. Let's hit that intro. Ooh, let's hit that. All right. Boom. Uh, number one, we got SciTime Corporation is up 31.21%. They build timing devices. So for those fountains and uh, irrigation systems like sprinklers, that's what they build. Basically, the only reason they're up so much is just their earnings call was higher than expected. So no really viable reason. Um, Pretty cool. Not bad. Yeah, I might check them out. And then number two, we got New Egg Commerce Incorporated, which is up 22.4%. And they're an online computer parts retailer. It's based out of California. So basically like an online version of Radio Shack, if you will. Oh, okay. I think we lost Tyler again. All right, hopefully that's the last of the technical difficulties, knock on wood. All right, uh, next up, we got the big losers. Uh, Tyler, you want to introduce this one for us? Yeah, we got Robinhood Markets Incorporated Hood. 
down 27.59%. You know, their IPO went up crazy yesterday or in the past couple of days, but now they're finally taking a little bit of a slowdown and uh, went down a bit. So love to see that. We still don't like Robinhood. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's that. And then we got Fiverr International LTD. They're down 24.08%. They're an online freelance market. I, I don't really know anything about them personally, but they're just not, just not having a day today. Yeah, it's a Fiverr.com. It started because you could pay people $5 to do gigs or like, you know, voiceovers or like draw a cartoon or something. And then it just kind of evolved from there. So that's how Fiverr started. Very cool company. Very innovative. First of its kind. So make sure you check them out as well. Ooh, by the dip, maybe. Yeah, by the dip, by the dip. But uh, also need to go take a nap real quick. Sleep, 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 Got Nokia coming in hot, hot, hot at number one. Um, they've always kind of been an innovator in the industry, really. So uh, it's good to see them going up. And they also have one of the largest 5G uh, cell tower holdings. So something to keep invested in for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, number two. Oh, yeah. Number two, we got uh, Etsy. Uh, they are a online marketplace for handmade goods and also reselling maybe used clothes that you didn't want or, you know, little knickknacks here and there. Um, very cool, especially during uh, pandemic times, for sure. Um, so make sure you check them out as well. And then I will leave number three to Big Gaucho. Tyler, we got it up there all for him to go crazy on. All right, big gauchos, you already know what time it is. It's Lordstown Motors time. We have been uh, taking it pretty hard these past couple of months, honestly, since I started investing in them, which has been going down, but that's not the point here. They're at $6. <laughs> they are about to start production end of next month. So this is it, boys and girls. Like everything we've been waiting for, finally start production of the endurance truck. I think the stock is going to soar over $100 by the end of this year. It is going to happen, hopefully, because I have so much money in this. But, you know, by the dips at 6 bucks, the worst you can do is go down to 4 bucks and then jump to 100 bucks. So I, I don't see why you wouldn't put your money in there. So buy Lordstown. It's true. It almost it almost seems too good to be true. But make sure, <laughs> make sure you throw a couple bucks in there um, and watch it go to the moon. So check out Lordstown, as always. And uh, with that being said, we also want you to go check out Anchor because they're still the sponsor of this show. Nothing about that is changing, and they are number one for a reason. So let's hit that ad. Whew. All right. Um, as we know, uh, still new, no new additions to the Bankruptcy Boneyard. We always hate Ruby Tuesday. That's never going to change. Something that did change, though, is the Dow game has reset. Um, I was able to hit 100 um so i took uh round one dub there and uh we have reset the game completely so we're starting fresh and uh canal is pretty much destroying all of us um he's got three and none of us have won anything so uh with that being said i'm just gonna pick the clothes and go back to my roots i'm doing 35 150 we're in this we're going up boys dow jones never goes down we're going to break 40000 by the end of this year. Just watch. Yes, sir. Um, and with that being said, I guess you'll just have to come back and see if Dave or Kanal can buzz in before the end of the episode. But check us out next week, see what's going on. I want to thank everyone for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. The full message on anchor.fm slash biggouchos or biggouchos.com. If you want to send us an investing tip, we might play it on the show. Tyler, do that thing. All right, big gouchos. Quick disclaimer because we love disclaimers. Everything said on this podcast is our opinions from our experiences. That being said, please, please, please invest safe with Big Gauchos. And I want to thank everybody that's still with us. You know, we are growing every day. We're back to our regular schedule. We've got a lot to see, a lot of bangers, and a lot of guests. And uh, please like and subscribe. Please check out our check out that Instagram <laughs> as well. And also check us out on streaming services. We're on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, Google, Pocket Cast, Radio, Public, Breaker, Overcast, or you can ask share on RSS feed anywhere you listen to podcasts. Make sure, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we're rating one to five stars. We're nice if anything less than four and a half stars. And leave us a review. Tell us who your favorite big gaucho is. Tyler, we got anything else to add before we get out of here? We're back, baby. Let's get it. We're back. We're back. Season three, four, five. I don't really know. All right. Night from Arizona. Hope it makes my day peace.